and the prices are crazy. I don't necessarily think about all those hidden costs that add up. No, when it comes to kids sleep, I'm not playing, I will pay for that. This is not a budget friendly holiday. If he could have booked a flight and gone home a day early, he would have. Table. The floor has been swept. It's closing time and I'm a little tired. It's a long time since I've slept. The things are moving forward. I'm ready to move on. Heading for a brand new start at the break of Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new vlog. I'm Lee from Mortgage Freely. I talk about money and mum life on the internet and today we're on holiday. It's a travel vlog and we're going to talk about how much we spent, how much it cost and whether or not it was worth it to be honest and why we made the choices that we did because there are definitely some important reasons and some important things to be said about the money spent on taking a holiday. So we are currently on our week-long family holiday. We are in Spain, we're on an island called Menorca and we're here for one week all-inclusive. Now we're staying at a hotel called Zafiro. We actually stayed at this hotel chain last year with my mum and dad when they came away with us. And we actually really liked it. It was perfect for the kids. So the reason we chose Zafiro Hotel last year is kind of the same reason that we've chosen it this year. So last year was our first time at the Zafiro Hotels chain. We went on holiday to Mallorca and it was our first time with two kids in tow. The baby was about eight or nine months old. Um, and obviously we had my daughter who was like about four and a half. I don't know about anybody else, but I get so overwhelmed looking for a holiday. There are so many choices. I get so overwhelmed with the pressure of picking the right thing. And it's as if like the whole entire responsibility for everyone enjoying the holiday is mine, um, which obviously isn't, but that's how I feel about it. And I get so overwhelmed with it. I get like really stressed about making the wrong choice. And it's rarely happened, in fact, if it's ever happened, that we've had like a terrible holiday, but especially I think now we've got the kids, the pressure just seems to be even more. So obviously I'm looking through the internet at like every hotel in the whole entire world. There were a few important things about our decision both last year and this year that have really come into play with where we've chosen to stay. One is I did not want a long flight time. Some people's children are excellent on planes. Like, don't get me wrong. I know there's like this whole movement of do the things that you used to do with your kids. And maybe some people can do that. But my children and me would not survive a nine hour flight to the Caribbean as much as I would love to do that. And when they're older, we will, but there's just no way. There's no way, especially the baby. And I just don't wanna put myself or anybody else through that, anybody else on the plane, anybody else in my family, like, no. So we wanted to go on a short flight. So we're from the UK, we're from the north of England. Um, so Spain seemed like the obvious choice. Family friendly, well-known holiday destination, short flight time. I think our flight here was two hours and nine minutes. We also had a really big, discussion and decision about whether or not to go self-catering or all-inclusive. In years gone by, when it comes to Europe, I have always been self-catering. I don't know if I've ever been all-inclusive in Europe until last year. We have been all-inclusive in the Caribbean and other parts of the world, and I would definitely say all-inclusive in Europe is different than all-inclusive in other parts of the world. That's just my opinion, particularly when it comes to price. However, the first year we went away as parents was 2020. We had a five month old with us. That was my daughter. She was on antibiotics at the time. We went with my mum and dad and brother and we decided to do like an Airbnb situation in Menorca, which was the first time I'd ever been to Menorca. And it seemed like a really good idea at the time. But as you know, and as I've alluded to before, I love her to pieces, but my daughter was very challenging as a baby. It was a hard time for all of us. I wasn't well, she was a challenging baby. She didn't sleep. She was ill and it was just really tough in that sense. I remember my husband literally wanted to go home the day before we were due to fly home. Like, I think if he could have booked a flight and gone home a day early, he would have because it was just so hard. It was so hard. Please don't let that put anybody else off. But for us, it was so hard. So we did the whole self-catering, Airbnb, private pool, all that stuff, which I thought would be the best idea. But last year, my husband was insistent that we should try all-inclusive. We, by that point, obviously had a five-year-old with us. He was obviously going to be eating more, wanting to get drinks, wanting to get ice creams, all that sort of stuff. And I feel like those kind of extra costs in Europe can be quite pricey and they can add up quite quickly. So eventually we decided to go all-inclusive 
And when we were looking at hotels, I very specifically wanted one with a very good kids pool. That was the main thing that I wanted. Very good kids pool, good kids entertainment. Because if there's one thing I've learned, it is absolutely true that if the kids are happy, we're more likely to be happy. I, I was searching for an excellent kids pool. Because you know, as like a four and a half year old, that's where they're going to want to spend most of the day. So it was actually the kids pool at the Mallorca as a four year old that sold it to us. Now, I looked at the hotel initially and it was very expensive. And then when I came back to look at it again, it had kind of come back more into our price point. So last year we went, we went all inclusive. We went to Zafiro in Mallorca and we really enjoyed it. It was absolutely the right decision to go all inclusive. Apart from to go to the beach a couple of times, we did not leave the hotel. Now that is not like me and my husband. When we've traveled before having kids, we would go out and explore the island, you know, go on trips, eat in different restaurants, all that good stuff. And I'm sure that that day will come again. But with kids, especially two young kids, especially a baby in tow, the last thing I want to be doing is trekking around everywhere with them, carrying all the stuff that comes with them, carrying them. I don't want to go in the pram. No, everyone was happy to stay in the complex, in and out the swimming pool all day. And it was honestly a joy to watch her having so much fun in that pool. And the pool was so perfect for her. Even the baby could like sort of toddle around. I don't think he was walking, but he was standing. He was quite an early walker. So even he could stand in the pool and it was absolutely the right decision. So fast forward to this year and we were looking for hotels again. We searched and we searched and we searched and I looked, I think, at every hotel in all of Northern Europe. I was looking at all the kids pools. I was looking at like the kids entertainment and I just couldn't find anywhere with kids pools that would be anything like the ones that we'd experienced the year before. In the end, we decided to go to another Zafira hotel and come back to Menorca, which honestly I didn't love the first time that we came. But again, that's that's because of our specific experience, not because of the island. And now here we are. But what I will say is, this is not a budget friendly holiday. By no means am I going to tell you that this holiday cost us like a thousand pounds for four of us. It absolutely did not. This is not a budget friendly holiday. And I just want to say something about this before I go into like costs. Some people can get very upset about how other people spend their money. And what I want to say is that I budget very specifically and intentionally, and I'm very intentional about how I spend my money. There are a lot of things that I don't buy and a lot of things that I don't do because I want to spend my money and direct my money to like things that really add value. Family holidays and travel is one of those things, those experiences that just stay with you forever. Like watching my daughter have so much fun in the pool last year, was just priceless. It was absolutely priceless. I loved it. And seeing the kids get to experience the kind of holiday that I didn't have and my husband definitely didn't have as children, as young children, because I was quite lucky. We started to go abroad when I was in my late teens. But before that, I think I must have been about like 15 until we went abroad. I'm not sure if my husband ever went abroad with his family. So seeing the kids get to experience those things that we never got to experience is just priceless. It's just what you want to give them as a parent, isn't it? So we budget all year. We will save year round to have a holiday like this. So within my budget this year, there is sinking fund. It's £250 a month that goes towards our holiday. Um, and honestly, we've gone over that budget, but, but we've got almost all of the price covered by that sinking fund. And if we didn't do that, if we didn't budget all year, and if we didn't save all year, and if we weren't really intentional about making this something that we want to include in our budget, we wouldn't be able to come, we wouldn't be able to afford this holiday. So I just want to make it clear that to have a holiday like this, we have to save all year. And I totally appreciate that for some people, even that is not an option, but that's how we have to do it. So I don't want to make it look like, oh yeah, we just dropped loads of money on this holiday. Um, and it's no big deal because it is a big deal. This is also our first holiday ever in the school summer holidays. We have never been away in the school summer holidays before. And the prices are crazy. I have asked quite a lot of people on my Instagram how much they've paid for our summer holiday in the school holidays, like all inclusive. And honestly, almost all of them so far are more expensive than what we've paid. So I feel a little bit reassured by that. It's not just us spending an insane amount of money on a holiday. The cost for this holiday for two adults, one child and one infant, because he's actually under two. So he's still a lap seat on the plane, which honestly, I would pay for him not to be a lap seat, frankly, and have his own seat. But um, he's still a lap seat on the plane. Allegedly, we got a free child place for my daughter. I'm not convinced that we did get a free child place for my daughter. I'm pretty sure that's like a marketing tactic because otherwise it's a very expensive for two adults to come away. 
but the cost for this holiday was £3,622. That was with Jet2. Jet2 seemed to be the only travel provider that were offering holidays to the Zafiro Hotel, which is specifically what we were looking for. And I will say it's the first time we've ever been on a package holiday with Jet2. We've usually gone with like Tui or Thompson. In fact, the first year we ever went away with my daughter, we flew home with Thomas Cook the day before they went bus, like stopped flying anyone back home. And all of my family knew that this was happening and I didn't and no one told me because they knew that I would lose my mind thinking we were going to get stuck in Menorca with a five month old. Frankly, it would have been horrific, especially since I've said my husband wanted to come home the day before. Maybe that's why. But we've usually gone with those like really big, well-established travel names. We've flown with Jet2 before, but we've never been on a package holiday with them. And we've had a great experience so far. £3,622 is for one week, all-inclusive, at the Sefiro in Menorca. Um, flights, transfers, the all-inclusive is breakfast, lunch, dinner. There's also like a snack restaurant at the pool. You can get like ice pops, ice creams, drinks all day long, pretty much. There's evening entertainment. There's the kids mini club as well, which is literally just right outside the window that I'm sat in front of. Um, and all of that is free unless there's like a supplement for certain things like I think t-shirt painting and you have to pay like seven euros to get the t-shirt but everything else is free and as we discovered last year we pretty much don't have to buy anything else if we don't want to like we could have come here and not spent another penny but I'll talk about what we have spent as we go along here I come you better watch out you better beware the rumor is out nothing can stop me I'm going for gold I'm out of the dark. I'm out of the cold. Here I come. You better watch out. You better beware. The rumor is out. Nothing can stop me. I'm going for gold. I'm out of the dark. I'm out of the cold. So most of the cost of coming on this holiday is actually going to have happened before we've come. There won't be much that we have to pay whilst we're here that'll actually come out of pocket. So before we've come, we've had to pay for my daughter to get a new passport, which was £53.50. We've had to pay for a cat sister to come and look after our cats, which was £40. We had to pay for airport parking because we now drive the car to the airport parking at Manchester Airport and park there. And then obviously we can drive home when we get back. That was £64.99, but we did get some cash back on that. So I think we've got something around the £15 mark pending cash back for that. I also had to buy things like new clothes, which I honestly couldn't tell you how much I spent on new clothes. Obviously the kids can wear those aside from this holiday and myself. I had to get myself like quite a lot of new clothes. And clothing is one of those things that I don't really buy. I don't really spend money on clothes. It's just not something that I prioritize. Um, so I just did not have sufficient clothes to come on holiday. Like I literally did not have enough clothes to come on holiday in a hot country. I just didn't have it. It's pretty much rained all summer in the UK, so it's just not really been an issue. I also did a very unsavvy thing, which was that I booked Airport Fast Pass Security, which is, is it Security Fast Track? Manchester Airport Security Fast Track. I booked that for all of us. Um, just in case, I get so stressed by like these videos that you see on TikTok of like queues out of buildings. It gets me so stressed. I'm the kind of person that is not chilled on holiday until we actually touch down on the plane. I'm definitely a stressy traveler. I think it was five pound each for the fast track security. The only thing with it is you couldn't take through like a pushchair or like a trolley, like a, a cart thing. We actually haven't brought a pushchair. We've brought a trolley. You will see clips of this trolley. It is absolutely the best thing we have ever bought. Like I swear, I think it was just under £50. I'll link the exact one that we got in the description box, which will be an affiliate link just so that you know. Um, but we bought this trolley and it has been a game changer with two kids. Last year when we went away with my daughter, we, the baby was still in a sling. So we could carry him and she could get in his pram. My daughter did not go in a pram as a baby at all, like hated it, would not go in the thing, literally walked everywhere from the minute she could. Before that, she was in a sling, didn't want anything to do with it. Now she has a baby brother and she sees him in it. She wants to be in that pram. That pram is the most important thing to her. So she definitely has pram envy. Also, it's hot. She's tired. She's still only small and she just gets really grumpy about having to walk around. And there was quite a big hill to walk up to get back to our hotel from the beach last year. This year, we have this trolley. I'm not saying that it's recommended to let your kids ride in it, but we do. Don't take this as advice. I'm just telling you what I do. We let both our kids ride in the trolley. I don't want to buy a double buggy. She's also like five and a half, so she's getting too big really to be in a buggy. So we let both the kids ride in the car. We can put our bags in it. People love this thing. Like a woman literally ran up to us 
at the airport to take a picture of the kids in the trolley. It was like they were some kind of celebrity. People just absolutely buzz off it. They just think it's so funny. Um, and the kids love it. I don't know if you would be able to do this on all other airlines, but my husband asked Jet to on their like WhatsApp chat whether or not we could bring this cart. It folds up instead of a pram, so like in place of our pram. Um, and they said yes, and we've managed to get it here. It's been absolutely brilliant, to be honest. In terms of any money that we spend while we're here, my dad actually gave the kids 20 euros each so they could get like water guns and inflatables, which we have done from the shop. So that was 40 euros that's not come out of our pocket. Thank you, granddad. And also the rest of the euros that we brought with us, we actually had a small amount of euros left from like a holiday probably several years ago where we must have taken too much cash with us. I wish I had that problem again. It's probably before we had kids. So any euros that we spend are not really out of pocket. We haven't had to like get those euros. I think we've been to the shop a couple of times already. The first time was to get two water guns and an inflatable boat. I think that costs about mm, roughly around 20 euros. I'll put the exact price on the screen. Then I went back to get some crisps and some biscuits for the kids just because they were getting a bit snacky and it's not the kind of thing that you can get at the snack bars here. I know the mum hack for taking one of those little like Robinson's cordial like you know the little or you can get them from Aldi as well you don't have to get Robinson's you can get like own brand Aldi ones the little like pocket size cordial things to put in the kids waters I've seen that before I thought about it and I decided not to do it which was ridiculous now I've had to go to the shop here and get some cordial because the kids want juice um just to make sure that they're drinking because honestly at this point they can have as many ice pops and drinks of juice as they want as long as they're taking on fluids um because it's hot most of our time is going to be spent in the hotel so there's not going to be a whole lot of going out exploring i think today we might head to calambosh which is the closest like town technically i think we're in calambosh but we're just to one side of it so it's just a short walk across to calambosh where there's a beach now i think that most of the beaches around here i don't know about the whole of menorca but around here are rocky beaches but i think there is a small sandy beach in calambosh and i just want to i don't feel like you can go on holiday without seeing the sea so i think we're going to take the kids down there just to see what's going on in that town, see what the place is like. My mum and dad have been to Menorca before, been to this part of Menorca before, and they really like the harbour. They said there's a really beautiful harbour, so we're going to go see what that's like. I'll let you know what we spend while we're out, because obviously if we're out, we're not in the all-inclusive, so I will let you know how that goes, and I'll take you with us. Yesterday is gone. Destination nowhere. We're back from the beach. The only thing we spent was about £8.50 in a shop to get some drinks for the kids. And also, they ended up with like these little packets of plastic balls. You know what kids like? They just won't leave a shop without something. Um, and I just didn't want to have the argument, to be honest. So that's all that we spent. There was a little sandy beach. It was very busy, but the kids did enjoy getting in the sea and also like playing in the sand, um, which you saw in the little clip. So that was nice. Then we just headed back. It was not a long walk. I don't really think that we'll probably go back down there because obviously we're all inclusive here. So it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. They're loving the pools here more so than the very, very busy beach and the sea. And there was no shade as well. So, so we'll probably hang out here for the rest of the week. So in terms of the euros that we spent, we've been to the shop now three times. We spent less than 40 euros, which is what my dad gave us. So nothing out of pocket for us so far. And I don't anticipate many other expenses. We will have to pay the tourist tax when we leave. And we also rented a cot, which is four euros for the night. I'm not sure if we'll get charged for the whole week. Um, we haven't actually used this cot, but I wanted to have options because when it comes to kids sleep, I'm not playing. I will pay for that. I forgot to say that when we were on our way out in the very first clips that you saw, we got a 7 a.m. flight, which meant that we were up at 3 a.m. So obviously no one had had breakfast. Um, we got coffees, which were much needed from Costa. We got the kids a toasty and me and my husband had um, breakfast burritos from Barbarito. I love Barbarito. Um, so I'm so happy to see it. So I had a breakfast burrito from there. So I'll add the cost for that on the screen. My husband also bought a coffee on the plane, which was I think four euros. And it's our last full day tomorrow. So other than that, I don't actually anticipate that we'll spend anything else. Now, obviously, we didn't have to spend some of the money that we spent. We didn't have to spend money in the airport. We didn't have to buy a coffee on the plane. We didn't have to go to the shop. Um, we could have very much, as I said, packed some stuff and just come here and spent not one other single penny other than the tourist tax and the cot. Um, the only other thing that I think that we will do is leave some tips for some of the staff. I haven't really seen many people leaving tips, but there are tip jars out and I always like to leave some kind of tip. There's quite a lot of different places with different tip jars, so I'm not sure how the system works. So we'll probably leave like 10 euros in a few of the different tip jars. So I'm going to budget maybe like 30 to 40 euros for that. 
as I'm talking now, I have no idea what all this adds up to. I'm not that kind of mathematician. I cannot do that sort of math in my head. I will pop it right here. But I thought it was really important to talk about these hidden costs of holidays. I think a lot of the time we think about the cost of the holiday, the package that we bought, but we don't necessarily think about all those hidden costs that add up, the airport parking, the cat sitter, the snacks at the airport. And I literally did a post about this on my Instagram. I'll put it on the screen, in fact. Um, just some hidden costs to look out for when it comes to holidays. Just bearing them in mind and factoring them into your budget beforehand because it's very easy to forget and all these little costs add up and you can very quickly end up going over budget. So I thought it was quite important to just go over all the extra costs just so that you can see how much these have added up to. And we really haven't had that much in extra costs, especially since my dad gave us like 40 euros and that's pretty much all we spent in the shop. So, but since it is our last full day tomorrow, I'm hoping to get this vlog out for you on the weekend. If it's a day late, I'm very sorry. I'm trying my hardest to get it edited whilst we're away for you. Um, so hopefully you'll see it on Saturday. If you don't, it will be Sunday. And I'd love to know how much your family holiday is costing you this year. Are you going all inclusive? How many of you is there? I'd love to know how much you budget for family holidays because I feel like they're getting so expensive. And with us now being a family of four and having to go away in the summer holidays, it's just like so many more factors that really ramp up the price. Um, so I'd love to know how much you guys spend on your family holiday. I'd also love to know which of those hidden holiday costs are the ones that are going to catch you out. Which one is the one that always catches you out? You always forget about it. I feel like it's airport car parking. $64.99 for airport parking, albeit we did get some cash back. So expensive. So please do drop me a comment. You have no idea how much dropping a comment on a video like this can help a little channel like mine. But for now, I'm Lee from Mortgage Freely. I talk about money and mum life on the internet and I will see you on the next one.